Hello, I'm Sheila with The Grateful Goddess, and with me today is Shaheen Ureis. She is a entrepreneur and owner of several of the sport clips. Her story, her path to becoming a business owner is anything but usual. Born and raised in Iran, got married in Iran. I had my boys, I had two boys that they were born and raised, kind of sort of raised in Iran. They were about eight and four and a half years old when in Houston. Uh, definitely a culture shock, definitely uh, it was a big, big change for all of us. Because you didn't even speak the language. I did not. None of us knew any English. Um, so it was definitely challenging for the kids in school. We, shortly after we stayed, uh, we moved to Houston, we moved to Austin from there, Austin, Texas. And we started our residency in Austin, Texas. And the kids started a school there. Um, definitely hard and, and for them and for me with not having a car or not having any um, education background as far as the English goes. No job for a while. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely we, uh, when we went through a series of challenges, able to get a job in a restaurant near my apartment and work there. And shortly after I started looking into going to beauty school, to go what to do because that's all I knew sport clips I worked with them for such a long time watched the company grow from a single location to at the time it was about five or six hundred location eight we opened our first location 2009 second location and we just opened our last location in last November mm -hmm. it's been open for five months and definitely doing good that's wonderful and that is definitely the short version of the story <laughs> <laughs> A lot goes yes. on here in between. I just, you know, sure. I mean, uh, knowing your story, it was like I think one of the things that was so profound is that, you know, at the you know, young age of ten, you lost your mother and uh, and needed to step into that caretaking role. You grew up too fast, and you know, something that had happened when I was ten years old. My brothers were younger than me at the time, and um, you just learned to okay. You're not a kid anymore, apparently, and so you have to raise your brothers. And definitely made me a stronger person. I've been through a lot of challenges after my dad's marriage, re he remarried, and, and the fact that I had to live with my stepmom for several years uh, after that, and uh, the relationship that we had with my dad and my stepmom and my ex, uh, my uh, step brothers and sisters, it definitely made me stronger. It definitely uh, helped me to go through challenges I've been through in the United States with a bit, little bit more uh, assurance that, that I can do it. If I, if I were able to overcome all those, these are really nothing. You know, you right. can learn the language, you can work harder, and there's nothing you can't do right. in this country that if you put your mind into it, uh, definitely it's doable, definitely can happen. It's just a matter of you know, how much you're willing to. Because it was also in the midst of the war. When the war between Iran and Iraq started, um, I had my oldest child, he was about maybe three years old, and my youngest child was born like in bit during the war. And mm -hmm. uh, definitely a, um, not good experience as far as mm -hmm. having given birth to your child in the hospital and not even be able to stay, stay there for like 30 minutes or so. Literally after I had my child, they gave him to me and they said, you have to leave because it wasn't a safe environment to stay. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we moved uh, to a countryside. We were living in the city, which very close to the border. And uh, obviously it was a lot of danger in there. So we, we then we moved to the village where it's a little far away from the city and it was a little bit safer staying in a mud base house, you know, basement, basement. And, mm -hmm. and not having a, a running water and electricity, newborn baby and uh, definitely a lot of challenges during the winter time. We were living in the northern part of the country, so definitely a lot of mountains, a lot of harsh snow and winters. Mm -hmm. And that was like totally right in the middle of the winter when my second child was born. And, so there you are trying to raise two small boys with in a mud floor without a bed or right. mattresses. Right. Oh God, no or... bed. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely no, no water. No. We had a couple of blankets here and there, but the 
people were so gracious. People who lived in the village, they knew our situation, of course, and they knew my situation. So I, I had a lot of support from the people who lived there. They would bring food and try to comfort me and if I needed anything. But there was not a whole lot that they can do either. It's not mm -hmm. like they could give me electricity or running water or a nice bath. But it was just, it, it was, it, it was just how it was and you have to just so you find that sense of community it's that sense of community and mm -hmm. being there for each other even yeah. if you can only give so little right it's still that heart connection absolutely i i have to say honestly if it wasn't for their help it probably we would have probably starved because we had no food and they were able to like provide us with a little bit of food that it was enough for me and the kids and it wasn't enough, but mm -hmm. what are you gonna do? It's better than mm -hmm. nothing. So mm -hmm. we and then and then your husband would go off to, right. to work, he and you didn't know city. if you'd see him again. Well, right. I mean, he stayed in the city because he had to work, and um, for weeks I would not. I mean, we had no phones and communi other communication other than him just driving mm -hmm. or coming with the bus or any transportation that he right. could find. So we, I wouldn't hear from him like for weeks at the time and then he would come stay a couple of days and then leave again because he had to leave his shop open for somewhat and uh, to just keep the business mm -hmm. going with the little money that he was making we were able to buy some food and mm -hmm. and everything was in the black market you mm -hmm. know there just it was definitely a difficult time not only for me it was hundreds of thousands of people mm -hmm. walked like me mm -hmm. in the country we were all away from our homes and just found a well, safe haven mm -hmm. in somewhere, and mm -hmm. we're able to just survive. Fear of unknown mm -hmm. that what can happen in the next thirty minutes or in, or any any mm -hmm. minute you you may not be here. Mm -hmm. You know, you see your um, neighbors. When we moved back to the city, the war wasn't over, but I just honestly couldn't take it anymore. So I had to go back to the city. We built a little shelter underneath our staircase. We had a two-story home and. You know, every time we had uh, any kind of danger like we felt, we just will, we will, will go there and then hide and wait for it to clear up. Mm -hmm. You hear all the windows are shattering, and all the buildings are collapsing around you. You go outside and you see mm -hmm. everybody's running around, everybody's just trying to help each other out, blood on the street, people are just crying for help. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that, you know, not many people have seen and experienced. And I hope that we'll never ever experience, but mm -hmm. those are the things that I kind of grew up in my, my oldest one still remember the constant high alert we would sleep with our clothes fully closed literally shoes and clothes just sleep with that my bag next to my bed and ready to go if mm -hmm. something happened and it had happened many mm -hmm. times we had to just get up grab the kids and go hide it's definitely an unknown journey that we had no idea what to expect and what helped you get through that a lot of crying, a lot of praying, and a lot of um, just giving myself. I honestly self-motivated myself, like giving myself hope. Okay, if I just only do this, this is going to get a little bit better. Mm -hmm. If I just get through this, this is going to get easier. So it was really a lot of self-motivation. And then, of course, after a while, I got to know a few people uh, around me once I started school. Um, I got to know this amazing, amazing lady. She's an American. She got to know me through me doing her hair at the school with a little bit of broken English that I could speak at the time. She would come over and check their homework for me and help me out with their figuring out because they would just send a lot of stuff home and I couldn't read. And um, she definitely um, got involved in my life for a lot of good reasons and helped us a lot mentally and just emotionally and just being there and supporting um, in any way that she could. So it, when, when you come up against that roadblock that, you know, I, you can't take, you can't go to school and tell you no English, but you right. don't have the time to learn to English, learn English right. then you came up with yet another uh, a solution. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. I honestly did. It's, uh, yes, you're right. When you're working two jobs and he was working, so our goal was to make sure that our kids are comfortable as far as food and apartment, the, the, the small apartment that we had. So there was no time for me to take any English classes or I had no vehicle to, uh, to be able to go to both all three places, I should say, would be work, school, and English classes. So not only I, we didn't have the time to do it, we didn't have the money or the 
or the tools to do it. So I just thought, you know, I'll just go to work and listen to people. And I honestly, most of my English that I've learned, the common, just, just normal, basic communicating with people was by just listening to them, just listening and observing and just remembering it and using it back. It's, I repeated it back. I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes. I still do mm -hmm. uh, because I still today, till today, I haven't had the chance and opportunity to go take some English classes, which I think that's going to be my next school listening to people and the people were so nice many many times they corrected me with if I made a mistake they would tell me okay no you, that's not how you say it this is how you say it and I repeat it back to them and that's how I learned English and I remember when I when first I wanted to go in Golden Beauty School they didn't accept me mm -hmm. for that reason they said that there's nothing wrong for her to start in school but she's not going to be able to understand because they mm -hmm. had there's a book that she needs to read and tests that she needs to take and she's not going to understand mm -hmm. any of those. So she, the advice was to go to a class, English class, and then come back later on once you're comfortable mm -hmm. with at least keeping the communication and conversation or understanding, comprehending mm -hmm. the book. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously that wasn't a choice for me, so I just studied at home with kids. Mm -hmm. I, once they were doing their homework, I just sat next to them and I watched them. I repeated, I wrote it back, and I practice with them. We watched a lot of cartoons and TVs, the basic stuff that they teach in the in the cartoons that was really, really helpful. To me, I probably learned more than the kids <laughs> did. So I read their book, read their book, and I was able to pick a lot from their book because it was so basic. They were in uh, elementary school and it definitely helped me to learn more. And then six months later, I was going to school and and it's just never it's giving just up. Never it's giving just, up. Yeah. No, you just. I had dictionary always with me when we were studying our book in school. The key people throughout your life that that stepped up and helped you, but you needed to take the first step to. Oh yeah. To absolutely yes. yes, I did, and 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 it's okay. I mean, we all have to. I mm -hmm. mean, there, no one's going to change your life for you. You're the one have to take the first step, and if you don't want to, no one's going to be able to. You know, you just mm -hmm. take one day at a time, one step at a time, mm -hmm. and you get brave mm -hmm. and brave, but yeah. taking an extra step and knowing that there's a lot of people. Uh, I mean, United States is my country. It really, truly, I get goosebumps every time I uh, see the flag or I, you know, I mm -hmm. national anthem. They're all part of me and my kids' life now. It's This is our country, and I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, what does um, freedom mean to you? A lot. The fact yeah. that you get up in the morning and you can speak your mind, even though with the people who disagree with you, you still can have a civil conversation and mm -hmm. debate. And knowing that you know your life is secure, nobody's going to harm your kids or your family for what you believe and what you say. Your opinion does matter mm -hmm. here, um, and somebody's listening. You can vote freely, which is the greatest thing. That was the thing that I was so looking forward to when I became a citizen, that I'd be able to go and vote. And you can't do those things, unfortunately, back home. It's so sad to hear that the people's voices just so kept up and, and they can't speak their opinion, they can't voice their opinion, they can't freely go out there and let, let everybody know how they feel about everything. Mm -hmm. But here, it's, it's the greatest joy. Yeah. It's the greatest joy to get up you can disagree, agree, and you still can go on with your life and nobody's going to hold that against you. So what advice do you have for people who might be going through a difficult time? It will happen if you want to. Nothing's going to be given to you. You have to work at it, of course. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling when you feel like you really worked hard and you really achieved and accomplished this by working hard, it wasn't given to you. The advice is just take one day at a time and have faith and hope and uh, hang out with the positive people. They just help you, lift you up rather than just being negative and, and let you down. So just try to socialize with the people that's gonna um, make you, encourage you on the things that you do. That's wonderful. Thank you, Thank you.